Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thai Union Group Analyst Meeting for the second quarter of 2024. My name is Nonwan Kidwat Paisan, and I will be your MC for this event. Today, we are proud to present you our innovative product. This is John West Eco Twist. And you may already have seen it outside at the booth. And later on, you will get to know more about this during the presentation. Moreover, today, we present you our souvenir from our own brand, Select, which includes Select Fit Tuna Steak in Spring Water and Select Tuna Pants, which showcase Thai soft power. And today, I would like to introduce you our management who will be the key speakers today, starting with Kun Thir Pong Chansiri, our president and CEO. And followed by our group CFO, Mr. Ludovic Garnier. And last but not least, our head of investor relation, Kun Pinyada Sang Sakdahan or Kun Kwan Kha. And the session today will take around 1.5 hours, starting with the presentation and followed by the Q&A session. And after that, we would like to invite you to join the lunch with our management car. So without further ado, I would like to pass this on to Kun Pong for the presentation car. Hello to all of the analysts and the fund managers and the financial invest institution heads. It, this is uh, we're taking the opportunity to report on our second quarter results and the first half for you and also the outlook for the second half for the second quarter it has been a period that emphasizes our continuous growth and a recovery in our results so, uh, starting from the first quarter, our sales have grown by about 4%, but more importantly, the gross profit margin is at the uh, highest level out of the past three or four months at 18.5%. Other than that, in the past period, we have reduced costs, by 200 million shares. This is the second, uh, the second set. We have a third set left, and we would like to inform you once again, so that you don't have to call us and ask why we have announced that we will sell because this is the requirement from the Ministry of Commerce requiring us to announce sale and we were not able to sell in three days and to reduce the capital so the second set will reduce as well so there's no need to be surprised analysts these days are uh, are quite um, you we're easy to surprise john west as well is something we've seen a launch an innovative launch and a key launch uh, and john west in the future you will see that this is uh, thanks to our eco twist launch an innovation that has been developed from gic our global innovation center and we also have a patent for this normally if you can remember our tuner products when we have products so we have a portion of three or four cans at a time we have a plastic sleeve, but this time to achieve our sustainable packaging goals and also to lead to a selling advantage because no one else can do this. We have a special glue strip and this is all for the same purpose. This is a recyclable material and this is something that we are very proud of. And we have received, uh, it has received a lot of uh, positive feedback. And we continue to um, pursue this effort. We continue to monitor feedback from customers. And if we are as, as successful as we hope to be, then we hope to see expansion of this into other markets, whether it's France or Italy or the United States. And aside from this, we have also announced our dividend payout, our interim dividend payout, 
at 31 satang per share or the payout at 59 percent also you all have probably already heard the results for itl the performance results presentation and they have done exceptionally well and we're seeing a recovery as we have been hoping for after we had the destocking issue in the past year and we hope that all of you our investors will be uh, more at ease now and then we're also seeing the pet food trends improving trends I tell, thanks to its outstanding performance results and its improved share price, it has been included in the set 50 in December in the past year. And this is also something that we are very proud of. And other than that, Thai Union Feed Mill. We informed you as well. We have, uh, again, favorable results, whether it's in Thailand or in Indonesia. And in Indonesia, many of you asked, and you know now that there is much potential for growth. We will be putting all of our effort in terms of our management, our executives, or they're flying into Indonesia. We will do everything it takes next year uh, next month i in fact will be in indonesia i haven't been there for quite some time now but i will be there to take a look at the shrimp feed business and also to visit with the factory uh with our factories there and our chicken of the sea to update the situation get an update on the situation to see our competitive situation this year is a year that after we have not had to travel to the u.s in the past two years this year i have had the chance to go to our operations i went to all, almost all of them uh, whether they're in europe or in africa and we have plans to go and see our customers and competitors in spain we'll be going to spain next month and we also have new customers in many other countries that we've never been to whether it's in turkey Latvia, Slovenia, and Greece. We will be there to take a look and also to visit Ecuador as well in October. And these are some positive developments that we'd like to share with you. Our financial and competitive status is improving. Let's have a look at our performance results, our operating results. For the second quarter, we grew at 4%. In the first half of the year, we had about 69 billion Thai baht in uh, total sales. Our SG&A score profit is good. SG&A may have gone up a little bit, but the main reason is because of our investment in our brands. And this is our strategy moving forward. We will invest in our brands, whether it's in the States, in Europe. We will have increased investment, so it might look a bit high. Uh, over the past period. Our balance sheet, if you take a look, you will see that our net debt to equity is at 0 0.2, 0 0.82 times. This is a low uh, figure. Many of you are wondering why we want to take a loan from ITAIL. And uh, allow me to explain that the goal is to manage our co corporate funds. We don't have any other objective, so there's no need to worry that we're going to use the money in an inappropriate way or an unsuitable way. Our balance sheet we allows us to have these intercompany loans, and the ITEL loan from them will actually be depositing, uh, depositing the money at a lower interest rate, so this loan will actually lead to advantage for ITEL because they will, have, or they will receive higher interest rather than... Um, Invest, rather than depositing it at a lower rate. Do we want to do M&A? M&A will come from ITIL. ITIL is the growth engine for us right now. They have, 
they will have more opportunities to share their expansion plans in the future. And whenever they need money for M&A, the conditions are that they can recall the loan at any day, any time. So there's no need. If ITL needs the funds, we can return. We can pay back the loan. So we want all of everyone to rest assured that we're handling this. Many people are worried why the year, uh, the day before, after ITL announced that it would allow to you to take a loan, to you would have to announce that it would take this to the board. That is because the Stock Exchange Commission, uh, Stock Exchange of Thailand, uh, require us to report this. So there is no need to become alarmed. And as for the second quarter, as we mentioned, we have grown by 4%. Our gross margin is 18.5%, and this is the highest in the past 12 quarters. Our operating profit is at 2 billion Thai baht. This is at a very high level, relatively high. Our net profit, we do admit that we have an issue with the costs. I'm at high funding costs. And our net profit is still at a very good level, though, at about 1.2 billion baht. And on the next page, you can see the bridge that shows our profit. We have NCI, higher NCI, and this is due to our minority interest in ITIL and our email. And our company has been doing very well in this respect. And so. On the next page, this is about our dividends. We are still paying a high level of dividends, and we would like to pay higher than this, but it's not in the cards for us right now. Right now, we're not paying more than 60%, and we pay out twice per year, and we will continue to do this. And moving on, this is our Eco Twist. Let's show the video. It's very easy. It looks very easy, right? But it was very hard to come up with. It's a sustainable effort, sustainable packaging material, uh, change using this instead of plastic. This is a great challenge for us, but it's it's been a very successful development. And on this page, you can see our marketing efforts in every market, whether it's in the United States or in France or in England. In the UK, we are very active, continue to be active in this regard. And new product launch, this is in the States. So we continue to launch new products there. We have the frozen products, and we have our food service, and we've been doing very well in it. Our marketing, whether it's in the US or Europe, we are being aggressive in every channel, retail, food service, cup stores, we will continue to put more effort in that in those areas. And in the second quarter, we also received awards, whether it's ITL going into the set 50, being listed in the set 50. We have certificates, corporate governance, we have a FTSE for good, and we also have sustainability, our activities in sustainability in the second, uh, the past quarter. And you can all take a look at the details. And I'm going to pass things on to Ludo to discuss the financial performance. Thank you so much, Kuntura Pong, and, and welcome everyone. Very happy to be with you today. Um, I think we have some positive news to share with you. As usual, we will start with the, the key takeaway. Uh, the operations are recovering very strongly in Q2. Um, the sales are accelerating compared to Q1, 3.6%, uh, and we will elaborate where does it come from. I think the gross profit margin should be the very good surprise for you, 18.5%. Um, this is very high. Also, we have some key drivers. You heard ITEL 
Yesterday, you had TFM also this morning. These are the, some of the key components, but there are some other components also. The ambient sales also are recovering. Uh, you know, we have been under challenge last year, and this is clearly one of our key targets for this year. Okay, we want to regain some volume in the ambient business. We have some positive news on the demand coming from the US, or from the Middle East. The Middle East were very soft last year. Now they are recovering the gross profit margin of the ambient category, even if it's still declining compared to last year, is recovering quarter on quarter as per the, the expectation. Pet care performance, we get back to almost where we were two years ago, which was the best year ever for ITL. So hopefully we can continue in that direction. And the last point, the free cash flow generation was extremely high for us in Q2. Okay, we are exceeding the, the 5 billion baht for the first six months of the year. And also I would explain where it's come from, but I think it's a good success. So here, next slide, you have um, our five-year story. You can see here the gross profit margin, 18.5%. This is our second best ever performance. Okay, the record high for us was 19%, and it was performing Q2 21. Okay, in the context of COVID and very different, very different situation. Okay, and we will explain where does it come from. You don't see that reflecting yet in the bottom line. You see the bottom line is 3.5% net profit margin. We have a bit of FX loss. We will explain where it, where it comes from. And Kunti mentioned also the increasing tax um, expenses and some other impacts below the OP. But the OP, very close to 2 billion baht for Q2. We're extremely happy with this one. Um, so just a quick deep dive on, on the sales. And it's easy to comment because we have some green everywhere. So this is nice. Uh, so top line growing by 3.6%. We are benefiting from FX. Okay, so let's be very clear. And especially the USD. The USD, the average was 36.7 uh, in 2024 compared to last year, it was 34.5. So we are benefiting from that. And for you, for you to remember, this is very different from our budget assumptions. Our budget assumption was 33.5, and we have been enjoying a much better FX rate since the beginning of the year. I mentioned also the demand in the US and in the Middle East, which is recovering, okay? And this is good news. We don't see yet this happening in Europe, okay? So our business in Europe is still facing some, some challenges. So you can see the volume growth is there. It's 1%. It's not yet very impressive, but we're on a good track. And we have some mixed performance between the frozen category, which is still declining, the pet care, which is very dynamic, and the other categories which are, which are growing. The gross profit margin, I mentioned, growing by 14% compared to last year. Uh, second best ever performance gross profit margin, mostly supported by the pet care, the, the frozen also, the value added also is recovering. The ambient is the only one declining still versus last year, but we're on a good track compared to Q1. We are clearly recovering. So if you move to the OP, OP margin at 5.6%, clear improvement compared to last year, 11% in terms of growth compared to last year. We have some SGNA increase um, in Q2, so just maybe a few words on this one. First of all, you have a negative FX impact. The FX is positive on our sales and GP, but you have the same impact on the, the SGNA. We also push for the marketing expenses. Okay, we told you at the end of 23, we lost some volumes in our branded business. We don't accept that, so we want to increase our marketing expenses. We cut maybe a bit too much during the year 22, 23 because of inflation. So here the idea is to push and to strongly support for our brands. And then we have some consulting fees. Um, maybe you heard ITEL mentioning about this one. They have a gross transformation project at their level. There are some extra costs. So we, these are some of the key highlights for our SGNA. So the ratio is 13%. Normally, we are always something around 12%, so it's a bit higher, but there is no concern on, on this one. The net profit, 1.2. Um, 1.2 is increasing by 14% compared to last year, coming from a strong OP. We have some positive news on the other income. The share of profit also is a good news, mostly coming from Aventi. Remember also that we sold LDH in Q1. So in fact, we have less associate compared to what we had last year, but Aventi performance has been really improving. But then after we have some increasing costs coming from the finance costs, coming from the tax, and also coming from the minority interest, as it was presented by Conti Rapong in the initial bridge. So just a quick one on the FX. Um, we had some positive news, the USD, uh, the GBP and Euro are still very strong versus Thai baht. You can see over the past few days, there were a bit of changes. And in July, you see the USD has been decreasing to 36.3. 
the beginning of August, it is decreasing a bit further. So we are watching out what is happening here in, uh, in the next months to come. The yen, of course, have, have been record low. Let's see also, you, you heard, I'm sure, the, the Bank of, of Japan increasing the, the interest rates. So that should be improving um, in, the next, in the next quarters. Um, so we, we provided you also a, a quick focus on the FX. And I'm sorry because FX is always very technical, quite complex to explain to you. So just to try to make it simple, um, we just focus on some lines which are only related to, to FX. So we have the line one and two. One is sales adjustment, where we have a loss of by 300 million baht. And then we have a line which is below the OP, FX gain and loss, where we have a loss by 200 million baht in Q2. And there are two components in this one, the financing and the operating activities. So first of all, to explain the sales adjustment, I think the easiest is to look at the graph that you have on the top right. You can see the blue line, this is a spot line, okay? And the orange one, this is our hedge rate. And you can see our hedge rate is increasing, but the spot rate has been increasing even further. So we are always running after the spot rate. And this is why this is generating some effects lost in our sales adjustment for us, okay? Below, same story for the operating activities. You can see the operating activities is mostly coming from the difference between the, the orange line, which is the same that you have on the top, and the blue line. The blue line at the bottom, this is the, the AR transaction rate. Okay, When we are paid, this is exactly the amount that we do, we do receive. Again, here we have some negative, same situation that in Q1, but a bit more. Okay, And then in terms of financing activities, we have some impact coming from the interest rate and the valuation of our hedging strategy for the Interco loan. That is one thing you don't see on this graph is we try to hedge. We are very conservative, you know, that in all our transactions, okay? So we always increase, include in our selling price the cost of this hedging. So when you look at these numbers, you could, you could see, oh, it's a net net impact, which is very negative for TU. It's not the case. It's not the case. Why? Because we reflect this in our selling price. Okay, so part of our part of our NSV is also offsetting this impact. Um, on the raw materials, we have also uh, this is delivering as per the expectation. We told you in Q1 that we were expecting this tuna price to be at the bottom, uh, and it has been increasing almost to 1500 in Q2, and then you can see in July almost to 1600. So this is exactly what we were planning uh, on on this. We do expect Q3 to increase around 1,600, and then Q4 to decrease a bit around 1,400. But overall, over the whole year, the tuna price would be much lower compared to our initial expectation, which was around $1,650. Uh, the shrimps, you can see, you have some bit of ups and downs, but overall, the shrimp price remain uh, very cheap. The salmon, different story here. The salmon has been expensive over the past two years, and it keeps being expensive. Uh, next one is to just to watch out on the freight prices. Um, you know, of course, there was the issue with the Red Sea, which was already there in Q1. This is continuing right now. We don't see an improvement on that. Uh, and also in Q2, we have, been, we have seen a bit of pressure on the container because China was trying to push for the containers to be delivered in the US. Okay, So you can see the, the price of a container from Thailand to USD has been increasing close to $6,000. And the lead time also has been increasing to 45 days. Okay, so this is a watch out for us. Um, we keep monitoring for this one. We are still far, far away from where we were two years ago during the crisis, and we don't expect the freight cost to be in that range. However, this is something we keep monitoring. On the slide 24, I think we have many good news to share with you. The inventories are decreasing, okay? So we had 47 billion baht, you can see in the middle, compared to 53 billion baht last year. I think this is a positive development. I told you one of our targets for 24 is to have our networking capital and especially the inventories decreasing, okay? So this is happening and this is a good sign. On the top right, you can see the net debt to ABDA. I told you also that one of my targets for 2024 was to have this ratio below the four. Okay, and you can see in Q2, we are at 3.78. So this is happening quicker compared to my own expectation. So this is a good news. Again, we have a strong cash flow generation happening in, uh, in Q2. Net debt to equity is stable. Uh, and I will elaborate in the next slide about this one. So net debt, you can see here on slide 25, is decreasing. Okay, it was 51.5 at the beginning of the year. Now it's 51.4. 
And despite the share buyback, so you can see on the right, we have a big box, 3 billion baht of share buyback program. This is the third one we have been doing. Despite this one, we managed to decrease our net debt. I think it's a very good sign. How do we explain that? We have a strong EBITDA um, in H1 by 6.5 billion baht. And then you can see the next box is very important, the change in networking capital, okay? Keep in mind in 21, 22, we have been investing 15, 1, 5 billion baht in networking capital because of inflation. Here for the first time, we see some decrease by 2.6 and I expect it will continue further in the quarters to come. And then you can see the CapEx 1.5. It's a bit soft from my point of view. We have a full year target, which is 4 to 4.5. And so there should be some acceleration in, in H2. All the other topics are very usual topics, but overall, very happy with the, uh, the development on the net debt. So Kontirpong already mentioned this one. So here we talk about the intercompany loan and there were apparently some questions on this one. It's a very easy. It's a win-win situation for Thai Union and for ITEL. Okay, so they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. We very often have to refinance our normal financing. You can see here the graph we show you at Thai Union level, our financing and what we have to refinance in the next years to come. So here you have one opportunity for ITEL to increase their interest income, and there is one opportunity at the same time for the union to decrease interest expenses. Okay, so again, it's a win-win situation. We gave you here a bit of details. The idea for us is just normal refinancing. Okay, there is no hidden agenda. We're not talking about m &A to come in the very short term, nothing about this one. But you can see, 24, we have 9.5 billion baht to be refinanced. Okay, and in 25, we have 12 billion baht to be refinanced. This is very normal. We have been doing the same last year, okay? So we will have to make a decision on the PERP. For you to remember, we did issue five years ago some perpetual bonds. We will have, to, we have the right to recall this PERP by November. We have not decided yet what do we do. We have few options which are on the table. We could not do anything, just continue with this PERP. We could reissue some new PERP or we could refinance through a traditional funding, okay? It's still an open discussion for the time being. But you can see on top of this, we have 3.5 billion baht bonds to be refinanced by the end of the year. And then next year we have 12 billion. So here the Interco loan will be up to 11 billion baht. There are two components, a long-term loan up to 6 billion baht also, um, and a revolving by, by 5 billion baht. Few things. First of all, we have also a condition that we cannot borrow more than 75% on the cash available at ITEL. Okay, so in no case, we can borrow the whole amount of cash available at ITEL. Um, and also, ITEL, if they need, because it's very high in our agenda regarding MA, they can recall for the amount very quickly. Okay, so for the revolving from one day to another day, and for the long term part, I think they have a notice period of 30 days. Okay. Uh, but it makes a lot of sense. Of course, there is one condition. It will have to be approved by the EGM of ITC. This one will happen at the end of September. Okay, so it's not happening tomorrow. End of September, we'll go to the EGM. We will explain to the shareholders the ID. It's a win for ITEL. It's a win for TU. So we do expect to have some positive feedback coming from the shareholders. Of course, the union will not be able to vote for this one, but we are kind of positive. We believe it makes a lot of sense from a finance point of view. Next one is very stable. You can see here, this is our, the structuring by maturity, by currency. We don't have any big change on this one, so I go quick. Um, next one, we just report the results in our blue finance. Uh, and you can see on the left, we had two waves of blue financing. We had what we call blue financing one, and then on the right, the blue financing two. Okay, so we did achieve all the KPI for the blue finance one, and we did achieve all of them for the blue finance two, except one of them, where we missed the target. So first of all, we are very happy to deliver five KPI out of six. We miss one target, which is the absolute greenhouse gas emission, but it shows that here we have some real target. These are challenging target, okay? So we are not doing anything wrong here. We want to beat the numbers, but I think here the production and the purchase of seafood has been higher compared to our own expectation initially, uh, but we want to get back and to catch up. We have a false, a false KPI, which has not been tested yet, it will be tested next year. And for you to remember, right now we have roughly 60, 65% of our net debt, which is linked to sustainability KPI. By next year, by 2025, we want to have 75%. And I think we are on a good track to achieve this number. Very quickly, also uh, a view on the share buyback. 
So just for you to remember, over the past few years, we have been doing three different programs of share buyback. Um, as per regulation, this is mandatory for us to try to resell. Okay, it's forbidden for us to share buyback, to do a share buyback program and then to cancel directly. Okay, so don't be confused. We all have to communicate to the Stock Exchange of Thailand. We try to resell. If we're not successful, then we can cancel. Okay, this is what we have been doing with the first and the second program. The third program, we have been rebuying 200 million shares also. This one will have to do something in the next quarters or in the next years. You know, we have three years to do anything we want on, on that one. And then I will pass over to Kun Kwan for the business performance. Thank you, Kun Ludo. Hello to everyone. For this part, we'll take a we'll deep dive into the different business categories for us. We'll begin with the categories. We have ambient, frozen, pet care, and value added. You can see that in the past six months, we've recorded 69 billion Thai baht, and our sales contribution comes from the ambient business mostly. This is the main factor. And pet care is seeing some development in terms of increasing revenue. Usually, pet care has a sales contribution from about 10%, but in this quarter, it has grown significantly to about 12%. And the growth for every category has gone up, except for the frozen business. On the next page, this is our second quarter numbers. We begin with the ambient, and the sales year on year, it's increased by 1.4%. This is mostly from the sales volume that is increased by 3.1%. And if we look at the ambient sales, it comes from from private label customers and also branded customers. Private label customers are mostly from demand in the U.S. and Canada, as well as in the Middle East. Because the Middle East, the year before, they had an issue with hard currency, and now they are show, it's showing signs of recovery. And for branded customers, you can see that there are increasing sales from America and Chicken of the Sea, that brand. And as our executives have told you earlier, we have been doing the marketing campaigns continuously to boost our sales and to increase our sales volume. As for sales quarter on quarter, there has been an increase by 1.3%. Nevertheless, in terms of sales volume, it's gone down by 5%. And this is due to the situation of the Red Sea. China has been hastening the exports. The U.S. is going to increase tariffs. And there has led to this has led to a shipping container shortage in that area. And right now, the tariff that is going to, it has already taken effect. The increased tariff has already taken effect. And in terms of gross profit margin, the latest numbers for us for ambient is at about 19%. This is an increase of about 2.3% from the quarter before. And this is an ongoing momentum. And we are seeing recovery and development to a stage that is close to what we are happy with. In the first half of the year for ambient seafood, uh, if anyone is unmuting their mic, could you please turn your mic off? Thank you. In the first half of the year for the ambient category, we have regained our top line momentum. And you can see that in the first six months, compared to the six months of the last year, we're seeing an increase by about 7%. Our gross profit margin is still lower than what we were hoping for in the first half, at about 18%. And this is a result of the fish prices that were higher, and they are now lower. Our business update for you. In the past, we have been doing many things to uh, achieve cost savings and increase our sales. For cost savings in July, we had a opening of a factory for frozen fish 
at about 8,000 metric tons of capacity to help us save costs uh, in terms of rental. And in terms of marketing, we are also doing advertising, continuous promotion to build our brand awareness. And this is a look at the tuna prices, as our executives have mentioned. In the past, the prices have gone down for three quarters, but right now the prices are starting to rise. In the second quarter, it's at about 1,500. And in June and July, the growth momentum is seen to increase in the second quarter. So it's about, uh, you can see the prices increasing. Here is a look at the frozen category. In the second quarter, the performance for the frozen category in terms of Q on quarter on quarter, we're looking at 13% quarter on quarter increase. And this is driven mostly by the increasing volume of 5%. And this is thanks to branded and private label customers. In the second quarter, it was similar to when we boosted reorders are being boosted because the third and the fourth quarter is a high season for the u.s in our gross profit margin it's gone down a, a bit from the last quarter this is due to a temporary result because of age inventory uh, or our frozen business in thailand and in the U.S. and also the feed business, we have a gross profit margin that is increasing visibly. And in terms of sales for the frozen category, we're seeing a year-on-year -year drop and also a decrease in the volume as well. This is a result from the softening in the U.S. and also right-sizing which began in the middle of the second quarter of last year. So comparing this period with it, we're still seeing some effect from that. And our right sizing has led to gross profit margin increase by 1% year on year. In the past six months, the frozen business, the top line is challenging for us it's gone down by 12 percent year on year and as i mentioned earlier we have been doing right sizing in the uh, uh, in the second quarter and this is affecting our sales nevertheless if you take a look at the gross profit margin you will see that we have an increase a very 2.4 percent increase compare in comparison to the six months before this year, we are doing right sizing. It's finished. Right sizing is finished. So for the gross profit margin, for the person business, we expect it to be in a range that is about 10 to 12%. And we have an improved margin. We are looking for new warehouses to save on costs. We're also trying to produce products that are more innovation based and to boost the sales of the frozen category. Our P and that we are revising our targets. Let's look at the pet care business. In the second quarter, you can see that the sales as well as the volume I have a strong growth momentum. Sales grew by 41% year on year, and volume grew by 21% year on year. And this is a return uh, due to a return of demand in the US and in Europe. And in Germany, we're seeing a lot of demand uh, increase there. As for our quarter on quarter, pet care continues to do well. Sales have gone up 13%. And in terms of quarter on quarter, volume is about 10% quarter on quarter increase. And you can see that the pet care business has been able to deliver an all time high gross profit margin at 31.3%. And this is their strategy. They have been doing more studies. They've been increasing their premium price mix in their portfolio. And in the first half of, of 2024, they have a premium mix at 
compared to the same period of last year, which is which was at 45 percent. And the sales for pet care have increased significantly in the first half of the year. This has led to ITL having a revision of its targets. If you attended the ITL analyst meeting, you will have seen their revised targets. Their sales have increased from 15 to 18 to 19 percent. Their gross profit margin is now, uh, the guidance is at 24 to 26 percent. And for SGNA, it's increased a tiny bit as well. And lastly, our value added category in the second quarter, we have sales growth, uh, year on year growth, and the gross profit margin has done, uh, we have seen good performance there. The sales for value added has gone up 60% year on year. And nevertheless, the volume has gone down 5% year on year. And the sales volume, the decrease is due to byproduct volume decrease. And the value it doesn't lead to much profit, but our sales are supporting this with packaging and ingredients and value added products that we have. And the gross profit margin for the second quarter is at 26.5%, mostly due to raw material prices for the packaging, the steel, the aluminum that are become, that have cheaper prices. This is supporting our value added gross profit margin numbers. And for the value added first half, the sales have a high potential growth and the business update we have in terms of business update we have a culinary plant to uplift our margin we have uh, we're looking for new channels for packaging and for ingredients and for alternative protein to continue our with our operations and that is the performance by category for you and now it's time for the outlook that we have revised, and I would like to turn things over to Kuntira Pong. Right now, we are in the month of August, the eighth month of the year, and we are very confident that this year will be a good year for us, for our group of companies. For top line growth, we are adjusting from three to four percent up to four to five percent, and our gross profit margin, we're adjusting from 17 to 18 percent up to 18 to 18.5 percent. As GNA, we're also adjusting a bit from 11 to 12 percent up to 12 to 12.5 percent. And our interest rate, we will increase it from 0 to 0 0.5 percent. This is the same. This is no adjust. There's no adjustment for this. CapEx is the same. No adjustment. I believe that in the next few years, we will be able to maintain a, a low CapEx level. And our level level is about, uh, is at 4 billion Thai baht. And our dividend, we will continue to pay out continuously as usual. The factors that, uh, we're, we're doing quite well. We are seeing an upward trend, especially with the fish price. We expect it to increase to about 1,700 in the third quarter, but it hasn't reached that level. And if it, when it does increase, it will start to weaken, and the average price for a fish will be lower than last year. And this is something that will help with our sales and to allow us to move forward uh, significantly in the market. And this is an opportunity for us. And also in terms of interest, which I hope the trend will start to come down. If interest rates are lowered, then that will help us with our costs. We'll be able to lower our costs even more. And the when exchange rates it's at a, a satisfactory level, we are seeing some appreciation, but this is a level that we are happy with, nothing that we're worried about. In terms of our company, I would like to inform you that we are not being complacent, even though we are seeing 
positive developments. ITL has uh, shared with you about their growth acceleration program for three years, and that is something that we haven't. We've hired a um, McKenzie as a financial advisor to help in this regard, as a consultant to help. We have a transformation program of our own for two years, and this is something that is going to allow us to change, to restructure, uh, the biggest restructure that we've ever had, and we continue to transform from a silo to a popco. We're going to break through all of the barriers to uh, to achieve more fluidity and liquidity. And this is something that we would like to share with you next month. And we will provide all of the details for TU and for ITL. And we, again, we will share this with you in the near future. We just uh, would like to inform you that uh, that is coming up. And we have cost competitiveness. This is something that we're very um, keen to achieve. We want to be the most competitive in the industries where we thrive. And we will continue to be aggressive on this front. Uh, I believe that this year, based on our actions and the developments that we've seen, the positive trends, and, and also with our human resources, I am much more confident. Uh, the past few years were ones that were very challenging for us. But today, I feel that uh, 2000, 1997, 2008, those were so difficult, and we made it back And from going to see whether it's um, competitiveness. Uh, there's nothing very difficult for us. I believe that we will remain highly competitive, and so, therefore we are quite uh, comfortable, quite happy, quite satisfied, whether it's in the U.S. or in Europe, even though there are issues or changes politically in many countries, the elections taking place. For our company, our business should not sustain much impact from that. In the U.S., people are very worried about a recession, possible recession there. We don't see that happening just yet. We don't see any signs of that happening yet in terms of the um, competitive field. Oh. And I believe that the elections at the end of the year, the, the sentiment won't be too bad, I believe, until the, the beginning of next year. And uh, in my viewpoint, the United States is something that the business for us will return, will improve, and will present more opportunities for us. And after we have restructured, we, re we right-sized our frozen business in the U.S., we are ready to grow once again. The U.S. Uh, our cozy is chicken of the sea. We continue to develop that, and we see support in the market. So uh, I'm very positive. In Europe, I believe that we have already gotten past the difficult stage. The interest rate in Europe and the UK and the EU, uh, the interest rates are, are, are doing better, and this should make things easier for us in Europe. Uh, things should improve there as well. And this is uh, briefly uh, what I'd like to share with you. If there are any questions, then please, we welcome all questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. And we will now move on to the Q&A session. For those who join online, you can send the question through the chat box or the Q&A function. And for those who participate here, you can raise your hand and our team will assist you. I'd like to ask about the MBN business in the second half of the year. I understand that in the second quarter, the volume has dropped down due to partly the delayed shipment. In the third quarter, the volume, say the sales volume, 
will it be better than the second quarter and the second half of the year if we incorporate headwinds uh, dealing with the economic slowdown abroad do you believe the volume will be better than the first half yes it will it, it get better than the first half for sure and in the third quarter we will see an improvement from the second quarter the second quarter we had a delayed shipments significant uh, due to the lack of shipping containers in the third quarter for shipping containers things should be better and we are quite confident that the second half will be a good half and the second half the growth will come from which side europe the states or the middle east and I'm still talking about the ambient category. So if you compare to last year, the growth should come from the US and Middle East, mostly. Same situation than in H1. And also Europe should recover in, uh, in H2 for the ambient business. Huh? Mr. Ludo, about the new plan of culinary plan, uh, how much the depreciation will increase from this new plan? So the investment was 1.2 billion baht, just for you to remember, and we have an average of uh, depreciation years, I think, which is around eight, nine years, if you do the average between the buildings and the equipment. The culinary plant is not a new business. We are combining three factories, and in this year, their revenue will increase to about 2 billion baht. It's not that we need to develop something new. This is actually expanding on what we already have. And the condition of the factory is uh, it's very high status, and we are pursuing world-class customers, whether it's restaurant chains, for instance, The new plant, once you open it in this third quarter, what will the utilization rate be? I think here there will be a ramp up. Just for you to remember, Kunturapong was correct. For the new culinary, we have been consolidating three factories, okay? So we almost finalized all the transfer from the old factories to the new factories. Uh, and then there will be a ramp up curve. So right now it's as per the plan. Of course, you don't start 100% from the beginning. So we expect it to take two, three quarters to really go to where we want it to be. But we are kind of positive. Initially, it was a bit slower compared to the expectation, but now we are back on track compared to our plan. Okay? We have different waves. We have a way for halal product, a way for non-halal product, and this is as per the expectation. Looking at the guidance, it looks like you're implying that the second half of the year you expect gross margin to be on an upward trend. And will this be driven by what business mainly? Yesterday with ITAIL, they said that the second, the third quarter, the margin would not be as good as the second quarter because the second quarter was so good. So here, the, you're right. Uh, if you look at the full year guidance, we have a gross profit margin, which is just below 18% over the first six months. And we have a full year guidance, which is 18, 20.5. Yes, it means that H2 will be improving. The key drivers will be mostly the ambient and the frozen business. Okay, the ambient, we told you in H1, they were overall decreasing the gross profit margin compared to last year. We do expect this to improve further next year. But you are right also on the ITER. From the communication they did yesterday, they said their growth profit margin in H1 would be higher than H2. So ITEL will not be the key contributor for the GP margin improvement, but we, ex we do expect the other categories to contribute to the, the improvement. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask in Thai, the ambient business, the gross margin in the second half is better than the first half. And what are the reasons? Is it the, is it the product, the market? So, so a few things. First of all, um, we have been absorbing the impact of the fish price declining in Q1 and in Q2. Now this is almost behind us. Okay, We also took the benefit to buy a lot of cheap, cheap fish during that period of time. So. Right now, we are starting to process 
the cheap price and the, the cheap fish price. And right now the prices are going up, meaning we can keep this upside for us. But that would be one of the key driver for us for the gross profit margin improvement, which is expecting to happen in Q3 and in Q4. We also mentioned that the branded performance has not been great in H1, to be frank, in Europe. The US is a different story, but in Europe. And we do expect the performance to improve. The marketing activities we have been doing will help for us in terms of top line, we believe, in Q3 and in Q4. So this is a combination of all these different factors. Okay. So and for the frozen business, do you think that in the second half of the year, the gross margin will be better than the first half as well? And aside from the feed, the frozen business, what reasons are there for this? So here in the frozen business, we have different components. The largest one is our frozen business in the US, okay, which is buying the, the, some of their products from our frozen business in Thailand. We have also the feed business and we have our chill business in Europe. So we have four components. The two first one by size, they are the largest one. Um, we do expect some improvement, indeed, in the gross profit margin in, in H2. Remember what Kun Kwan mentioned to you. In Q2, we have some edge inventory uh, accrual, which is negatively impacting the gross profit margin. It's not huge, but still, we do expect to be able to reverse this one. Just for you to remember, we have a very conservative policy regarding the edge inventory. Why? Because we use this one to put pressure on the local management. Okay, But sometimes it means that we have to accrue for some product and we know we will sell them. Okay, so it's just temporary downside and then upside after. And we do believe also the US operations will improve. Right now the demand in H1 has been soft. We expect it will improve a bit, not crazy, but it will improve a bit in, in H2. The feed business is in a very good momentum. You could hear TFM this morning, we believe this will continue. And the chill business also in Europe is doing well. We had one challenge in H1, which was our frozen business in Thailand. We do expect this to recover in, uh, in H2. That means that the frozen business, the sales for the first half have gone down year on year. That means that in the second half, you'll see increase year on year, right? I think overall it will depend a lot on the U.S., the U.S. market has been much softer compared to expectation, so it will be much closer from break-even. So slightly positive and negative, but it will be better than what you have seen in Q2, definitely. Okay, so quarter after quarter, we do expect some improvement. And my last question, SG&A for the first half, it's higher than the full year guidance. That means that the SG&A to sales for the second half will go down half and half, right? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. I think if you compare to our guidance, the phasing of our marketing activities has been a bit different compared to what we planned initially in the budget, meaning we spent more in Q1 and in Q2 compared to what we had in the budget. So you're absolutely correct. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to ask about the fish stock in the first half that was cheaper. The cheaper stock, can you? How much longer will it last? For how many more months? Before this, we would buy early, uh, and keep the fish stock for about two months. But during cheaper periods, we buy for up to three months stock. And if the price is higher, we will re we will reduce our position. But right now, the price is not higher. Our stock is for two or three months. And I'd like to ask about SG&A in the first half that is quite high. This mostly is up from the marketing or consultant fee, which is the bigger factor. And in the second half, it's going down. The consultant fee, will that go down as well? Or are you going to maintain it? And the, the re reduction will be from the marketing the dro lower, bigger drop in the half, second half. You have, you have four different impacts in the SGNA. You have FX. FX is the biggest impact uh, that we have on this one. Then we have the marketing phasing. And you're right, we mentioned the marketing was very high in H1. And in terms of relative percentage, will decrease a bit in, in, in H2. We had also the people costs, which have been increasing. In Q223, we had some reversal on the bonus accrual. The performance was not good, so we had to reverse on the bonus accrual. It was an upside at that time. You don't have this up upside happening 
in Q224. This is why you see this in increase which is happening. Um, and then the rest, the consulting fees, you know, we have some programs which will last two years, so we don't expect any drop compared to this one. Okay. Keep in mind the marketing activity. This is very important for us. We told you at the beginning we want to regain the volume, so we are very happy. And in fact, we would like to push further if it was possible. I think we have been a bit too passive, maybe, over the past two years in terms of marketing activities. Okay, so we need to rebuild the momentum. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, there is one question from online. Do you expect margin to further improve in the third quarter of 2024? Yes, we do expect to have in Q3 the highest growth profit margin of the year, and then after to drop a bit in, uh, in Q4. This is our normal seasonality. Uh, Q2 and Q3, usually growth profit margin is very interesting. Q1 and Q4, because of the mixed product and the mixed category, it's always a bit lower. So yes, we do expect some improvement compared to what we had in Q2. I'd like to ask about your target for GPM. What assumption for the fish price for the entire year? And you mentioned that this year the prices may not be as high as you expected, but is there other up, are there other upsides for GPM? So the key one, you're right, is the fish price. Uh, right now our updated forecast is 1450. 1450 for the skipjack for the whole year. We do expect in, in Q3 the fish price to increase a bit, up to 1600. And then after to decrease to 1400 in, 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 uh, in Q4. Okay, so if you look at the full year, indeed uh, the raw material would have been much cheaper compared to our own uh, assumption. Okay, apart from that, we do expect a volume push impact. So the efficiency in our factories will also improve in H2 compared to H1. So these are some of the two key drivers which will help driving the gross profit margin in, um, in, in H2. Keep in mind also the demand is very strong. Okay, you heard the TFM business, the ITEL business. We expect this good momentum to continue. Okay, and right now we are facing some challenges in Europe, in our branded business, and also in the frozen business in Thailand. We do expect this to improve in, in H2. So overall, the demand should recover. Uh, did we factor in this into the uh, TPM uh, target? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. And the second question, could you explain the Olympic event? Is it affecting the economy in Europe? No, so usually we don't see a lot of impact coming from this one. I'm very happy it seems to be a success so far, uh, but we don't see any drop or any increase in our sales traditionally from that. Okay, we'll have to see, you know, it's ongoing, it's not finished yet, but usually the most relevant factor for us is the weather. Okay, the, if the weather is good, then the people will eat more tuna. If the weather is not good, if it's raining a lot, then they won't eat a lot. Okay, and so far, the weather, not, the weather hasn't been very good for the summertime. I've, I heard it has been improving. Uh, so that would be the key driver. But in the Olympics, we don't expect much from that. I'd like to ask about the effective tax rate for this year. What will it, how much will it be? Because the second quarter is quite low. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I think the effective tax rate is between 3 to 4% in Q2. Um, we have different impact in this one, but we have some positive one-off impacting the tax. It's a net impact of 70 million baht. Um, we have also some negative one-off impacting the other income. So overall, in terms of net income, it's a wash uh, for us. We do expect the effective tax rate for the whole year to be between 6 to 8%. Okay, this is our tradition guideline plus plus one minus one from time to time, but we, we still believe that this is the right guidance for the whole year. But you're right in Q2, it's low. We don't expect to stay that low for Q3 and Q4, so it will it will increase back to our guidance. And I'd like to ask about long term. ITC yesterday they talked about their 2030 goals, and for TU. What is your position? So here we, we will have a specific session in September. Kunti Rapong mentioned this one. Uh, we want to do a deep dive on three things. Okay, so we want to talk about our strategy 2030. 
Okay, we want to talk about the transformation program we are launching for Thai Union. And we want to talk also about the growth acceleration program we have at ITEL. So we have three key topics in one session. So it's a teaser for all of you to come. Uh, this will happen in the first two weeks of September. Okay, so we are, we are defining exactly the date. That should be very interesting. Okay, we will talk about a bit more regarding our strategies, our view. We try to touch every topic. We thought maybe it would be too short to cover this one during this session. And we want to combine also TU together with ITER. Okay, so in one session, you, cover, you can cover all the key topics. Okay, so please come. Uh, the date has to be finalized, but it will happen the first or the second week of September. Uh, and then that will answer all your, your questions. Mm -hmm. Want to add anything? In 2030, we have our strategy, our goals. We'll tell you next month. Hello. Uh, may I ask about the CG report that you're going to have at the end of this? Will the rating for TU improve? You don't have a CG rating right now. You mean return? Yes, we have returned. <coughs> On slide 50, in Thailand, there's a drop. What's your view for the second half? I think I think you are correct. In Q2, we have a drop in the, the domestic business. It's not that much a concern, to be frank, on this one. So we do expect to see some recovery to happen in Q3 and in Q4. Overall, over the whole year, we are quite happy with our domestic. We have in Q2 indeed a, a drop, which is happening. It happens from time to time. You have also to consider the baseline was high also for this quarter. So no specific concern. Usually, each quarter, you talk about value added, and is there anything to share with us this time? Yeah, I think in the value added category, we have different components. We have our packaging business. Our packaging business is doing good. Okay, and this is one of the key drivers for growth for us over the past few years, and you know, Two, three years ago, the, our packaging business was focusing only in Thailand. The idea for us is to move up and to use our packaging business also for our business in the US and in Europe. And this has been happening over the past two years. And this is one of the explanations why this category has been growing. Apart from that, we have also our value-added business, where we have culinary and all the value-added products from Ambient and Frozen. This is also growing. And then we have our ingredient business. Okay, we are quite happy with the development of our ingredient business. Right now, the crude oil business in general is very positive. At group level, it's still small. Um, we know we have also a refinery. The refined oil is improving. Okay, we have one refinery in Germany um, that we are filling up. And this is really improving. And then we have our new factory, the collagen factory, which is, has been commissioned a few months ago. And also here we can see some progress. Okay. Apart from that, we have the supplement business, but these are smaller business. The key businesses for you to keep in mind, packaging, value added, and the ingredient business. If, we have, if you have a chance, we'd like to invite you to see our new factory, the culinary plant. If you have the time, we will invite you. Today, we don't have any new products to share with you, so there's nothing to share, but we are selling well. Everything we have is selling well. Are there any other questions from the, anyone here in the hall? As there is no further questions, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. And don't forget to join us for the lunch with management at the Sora room next to this room. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, everyone.